Osama, you have uh, already given a great amount of information to our viewers to uh, prove that the slavery that's in the Bible it's not is not the slavery that we look at in the 20th century or the 21st century and see back in the, uh, what, the 18th century, what took place in the 19th century in America, or in the 20th century in Sudan. It's not that type of slavery at all. And uh, we, I want to go to Ted Schubert for just a moment. And we have one caller, Peter from Germany. Mm -hmm. And then I think we'll be ready to take a break. And after that break, maybe we can uh, move a couple steps forward Absolutely. in your presentation. Because I think you've, you've done a good job of presenting that. Now, you may want to deal with some other passages in the Old Testament. But unless, some, unless we get a Muslim who thinks he can challenge us on that, now, I'm trying to bait the hook now, Muslims. Give us a call, 248-416-1300, that we could just move right ahead on that, okay? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let me get Ted Shabbat, and then we're going to go to Peter, and then a break, and then back to Osama. Ted Shabbat, let's see how you look on Skype now. Oh, there you go, full, full face. We got your, your nice green coat. You look good. Go right ahead, Ted. Yes, Mr. Osama presents a very good case for, um, you know, how slavery is, uh, is seen in the Bible, how the Bible, it's not really slavery. I would really call it you know, employees, servants, uh, things like, things of that nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, I would like to show some historical facts, historical data mm -hmm. on slavery uh, in, the, in the Christian world or in, in the United States, more, more, uh, more or less. And there's a very good organization. It's called uh, the Organization of Christian Solidarity International. And it, it talks about how uh, these Muslims today, we're talking about today, uh, slaveholders in Africa uh, are charging people $100 per slave to free them. Now, you, now say, you, to, you say today, 2010. Yeah, yes. Well, know. make sure our viewers realize that these are Muslim slave traders that are holding and selling, taking and selling slaves today in Africa. Yes, Go right ahead, Ted. This organization released a press release, and I'll read to you what it says. It says, reveals that in March 2007 alone, the group bought 96 male slaves, the Christian group, this, to, to free them, who had been seized as part of the Muslim Northern Government's Jihad on the nation's Christian and animist South. Six of the young men had been raped by their Islamic masters, and 99% had received frequent and sadistic beatings. And this is what's going on in the Muslim world today. And as I said earlier, it really it has to do with racism. Racism is the reason why all of these things happen. Racism is is Islam is filled with it in reality. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we look at the hadith, Muhammad said that the the, the children of Ham uh, were born or are born to be slaves to the people of Shem and Japheth to the people of the Arabs. And what we find, uh, you know, very good information here, what we find out is that Muhammad himself said that the Arabs are the most beautiful of all people, have the most beautiful of all lineage. So it really is connected to racism. And within Christianity, um, Christianity stresses, stresses on the notion of individuality, individualism. And uh, when we look into, for example, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ did not preach that the Christian church should become a government. It did not preach that the Christian church should take over the world. As a matter of fact, uh, when, the, when the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, should we you know, pay taxes? Jesus said, lend unto Caesar what is to Caesar and give unto God what is to God. Mm -hmm. Basically, what he was trying to say was he did not want the Christian church to become a government. Whereas in Islam, Islam becomes a government with laws, with uh, rules with, uh, um, you know, government uh, dictating what we should do. And when so, we... By the way, Ted, that would be uh, Sharia in particular, and in Sharia we find the laws concerning slaves, right? Exactly. And, the, and, and the, what happens is when, when we have an organization, a cult like this, which becomes a, war, a worldwide government, which has so much control over the people, then what we have is uh, we have dominance over others. We have a case system. Within Islam, there is the case system. Arabs, of course, are seen as the most supreme of all the races. Muslims are considered superior to non-Muslims. There is a case system within Islam, just mm -hmm. like there is a case system within the Hindu religion, which is why when the British went into India, they got rid of a lot, a lot of the case systems 
in in India, which now, now Ted, just, just for our viewers, caste or some some pronounce it caste. So you're talking about actual different levels of of uh, of status within a society based on race or whatever else. This is what you're referring based to. Based based on religion, and in, you know, within the Hindu religion, they yeah. have certain people. They call them the Achuta. The Achuta are the lowest of the caste people. Yeah. Lowest people in the caste, they have the worst karma, as the Hindus, as the Hindu scriptures state. Yeah. And when the British came, the British came with Christian influence, and they gave a lot of freedom to the Achuta people, and gave them the ability to break away from the caste system. The same thing with the Buddhist religion. When, when, uh, for example, when the Germans, the Nazi Germans, were traveling around the world doing expeditions, trying to find out who were the true Aryan people, they went into Tibet. And they saw that the Tibetans had a caste system that the Germans actually liked because they said, well, this is the Aryan people and they have a caste system. And within the caste mm -hmm. system, the only people who had power were the Dalai Lama mm -hmm. and the monks. The rest of them were the lowest of the caste system. The rest of the people were enslaved. And the whole nation was a country of slaves. Mm. And the, these slaves did not get liberated until China took over Tibet and liberated the, the lowest of the case when they dismantled the power of the Dalai Lama. Mm. Mm. So it goes to show you that uh, uh, slavery or caste systems are established anytime when you have a pagan ideology or a pagan uh, uh, government, a pagan theocracy. But within Christianity, there is no theocracy. Within C Christianity, as it says in the New Testament, there is no uh, Jew nor Gentile. There, you know, there is no man or there is no woman. Everybody is equal. Galatians 3.18, that's exactly yeah. mm -hmm. Amen. Ted, thank you so much. We're going to come back to you in a minute, but for time's sake, I want to try to get Peter, who's waiting online from Germany, one of our regular callers, and then after that, we're going to go to a short break with Brother Bruce in the other studio, and then back to Osama, and once again, back to you, Ted. Thank you so much for your patience in the background there on Skype. We appreciate that, and it was particularly insightful, I'd just like to mention, was this idea that the Nazis went to Tibet <laughs> and saw something in the Dalai Lama and uh, Buddhism that they liked, you know. And nowadays, liberals are all have these stickers on their car, free Tibet. Well, <laughs> well, you know, th those guys aren't, you know, j j just because they have to happen to be persecuted by the communist Chinese doesn't make them any holy uh, no, rollers, you know. <laughs> Let's see if we got Peter waiting online from Germany. Peter, are you with us? Hello, Peter, are you with us? If so, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, hello, Peter. Welcome, brother. Hello, welcome. Uh, uh, I want to greet you all, uh, you, Osama, and also Ted. Uh, it's very good. Um, I'm glad you're still uh, working hard for our Lord Jesus Christ. It's always good to see and hear. God bless you. Have, have you uh, seen Ted before? Of course, you know Ted is Walid's son. Yes, I saw him. on. Uh, he was on, one, on that one show. Uh, on Jihad Exposed, and there was the other guy, the, the, the Chahid Lewis, when he, when he uh, went ballistic against, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> against Kamal, and he called him all sorts of names. And, uh, by, by, know, by the way, Peter, uh, Muslims happen to be experts in ballistics. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. And Go right they ahead. like the commental too. They have the super tantrums and all that sort of stuff. They like that kind of thing. I know. Go ahead, go ahead Peter. <laughs> I, I wanted to say I wanted to say something to the to, to the ABN viewers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I happen to be uh, uh, be uh, on my own business. I'm self-employed, and this year I worked a lot on one project, and you know it it, uh, it worked out finally, but uh, payment got late. It's mm. still late. Mm. And uh, so I, I had a uh, little uh, problems with even paying the rent, but mm. I still sent something to ABN, and I'm not saying yeah. this uh, to to make myself look good or holy or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just wanted to say to the ABN viewers that even though times are hard, and I know times are hard everywhere, uh, maybe you could send something to ABN, and, and even if you're in, in a gym, I can tell you out of my own experience, God will provide. Amen. When you give something, you will get something back. Maybe not right away, but uh, uh, according to my experience, you get it back. Amen. So please, if it's five euros, ten or five dollars, <laughs> I think in euros because we have euros in Germany. No problem. So whatever you have, if it's just one, doesn't matter as long as you, because uh, I have to say, ABN is really needed, especially in Europe. We are further down the road 
than than maybe a lot of Americans realize. So. Uh, yeah, P Peter, just tell our our viewers now. You are in Berlin, Germany, right? Yes. And and what time is it where you are right now? Oh, hold on, I have to look at. <laughs> it's really late. It's it's one thirty in the morning. Okay, it's one thirty in the morning. And uh, sometimes we do shows, like my News and Views show, from 10.30 p.m. until 12.30 Eastern. And by the way, callers, viewers, Peter watches 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning in Germany. He has given money, and as he said, we're not doing this to pump up Peter. That is dedication. Absolutely. This man stays up at night Absolutely. because he sees the desperate need. And that's why we should have our TV station in English so he can watch it at the right time, not in the middle of the morning. And tell his uh, friends who understand English Absolutely. in Germany yes, and indeed. even Muslim acquaintances that he meets about this channel. We, that's why how important it is to have our TV station yeah. on time. Yeah. God's will.